Greetings and good Sunday morning this 9th of June 2024, still the third decade of the 21st century. If you're new to my channel, I always open with that to sort of try to draw focus to the fact that we are indeed in the third decade of the 21st century, as opposed to where some really educated people had thought we would be, versus where we're at and what sort of things we're dealing with. So if you're also new to my channel, I like to read, react, and respond to those of you that take the time to comment on my videos. And I will try to, depending on how long this takes, to get through all the comments, because Andra, you, you tend to write a lot. <laughs> um, I was asked to comment on a particular situation. I think it's Harrison Butker. I'll have to look up the name real quick, so I'll pause the video when I get there. Uh, and then I'll provide my feedback on that. So first one out of the box is Bradley856. I didn't know about your son. God bless you and yours, mate. Best, Daniel. Um, yeah, I, part of my coping mechanism is I do mention it. Um, coming up here shortly will be uh, his birthday, um, which, you know, is something as parents we've got to deal with. The easiest way I could try to explain it is, and I'm not speaking for anybody else, but I felt as though it was an extraordinary situation and an extraordinary event reserved for extraordinary people. I myself didn't fancy myself extraordinary. Um, for the last seven years of my military career, you, one could argue that it suffered. Um, I suppose it's a matter of perspective. I was allowed to stay in. I was allowed to retire. I could have been hardship discharged. Um, so I was grateful for that. I now have a pension. Um, I will admit it was a bit rough when everybody, all your peers are getting promoted and promoted and you're stuck on the treadmill going nowhere. Um, it had happened seven days after I retired. We had just relocated to a new area. We didn't have a network. We didn't know anybody. We knew all of one, one family. And seven days into, I'm a, I'm a civilian for all of seven days and this happens. I wish I could tell you that, would, that it was an isolated incident, but for the better part of the first year after that, the dominoes just kept falling and things just did not seem to get much better. Um, but uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, Stace, Heather with hearts. I'm assuming you're referring to Heather Langenkamp? Yeah. I will tell you, not that this is the appropriate venue for that. I'll try to get on my other channel. Uh, which Stace, by the way, I've been having some difficulty trying to come up with what to say for my other channel, but I digress. Um, at some of these smaller conventions, when there's not a lot of foot traffic for the celebrities, they tend to talk more, and it is so worth it. Okay. Andra. Hi, I have his email, but last I checked, I had not yet, had not yet replied yet. We'll check again. Thank you. Hey, roger that. Uh, Andra again. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, it's edited. By the way, we should talk about the interesting story, Army Vet Mauled by Grizzly Bear While on His Honeymoon. Very cool story, kind of scary. This is a good example as to why people should really get a proper hiking bear country type of dog. Don't mean any dog. Just a specific breed's designed to deal with this type of attack. Wasn't there more to this? I'm pretty sure there was more. I guess you took it out. All right. Um, not really sure what to say on that. Uh, you're, I mean, it, it's kind of a violent lane change. Um, perhaps on this video you can comment and uh, maybe we can take it in a different direction. Uh, talk more about that. Um, I think I have the original comments. Some. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, let me see here. Uh, not, and I don't mean any dog, just the specific breeds designed to deal with this type of attack and wildlife. I've, I've never been mauled by a bear, but I have been charged by a grizzly. Difference being with me and this dude is that my dog warned me and knew how to handle that situation properly. But he's 100% right, you do not have time to spray in lots of cases. You don't have time to do anything, really. I love this story because it ended relatively well and also now I feel less bad about slightly fumbling the stupid car keys. I was annoyed with myself afterwards for fumbling them. And yes, everyone got away without a single scratch, and that is why I always hike with my monster god. Monster because it sounds funny, not because he's mean. 
he's a sweetheart most of the time. Even with the bear, he just knew to just do enough to get us out of that situation. For him, it was the time of his life and not a scratch on anyone. You simply cannot just manufacture those instincts. I was very proud of him afterwards. It was like we rehearsed it, even though we obviously did not. Not saying you should still have bear spray and deterrence, definitely do. But based on my experience, none of this is worth as much as my pooch is. If a real life situation, dogs can warn you and also act and deter the attack. The bear spray can, uh, canister cannot do any of that. Fun topic uh, for next time. Uh, still don't take silly dogs into the woods. They are... Okay. Well, Andra, trying to respond to that. Um, me personally, I'd probably rather have a firearm as somebody who is trained with OC spray, uh, oleo resin capsicum, uh, oil of pepper. Um, bear spray is pretty freaking potent. And depending on wind conditions, depending on con just depending on the entire situation as a whole, you get any of that on you, in you, or near you, it's going to be rough for you. And you better hope to God it's got, you know, first first hand effects, like immediate effects on said bear. It's designed to, to do just that. Bear spray is designed to do just that. Um, so you can imagine what it would do to you. You could also make a good argument, too, that a firearm, you know, you still have to access the firearm, you still have to aim true, you still have to get a, a first round effects, the... the the round itself has to be devastating enough to provide first round effects. Sometimes with those larger animals, you know, unless you hit a vital organ or unless you, you know, connect with the nervous system like the brain or something like that, um, it, it doesn't always stop them dead in their tracks. Uh, the dog idea, I, I like the idea of a dog if it provides enough warning to produce better results whether that's fleeing the situation without harm to anybody the bear included because you're in the bear's territory or if need be provides you enough time to potentially access some sort of self-defense mechanism um all right what do we got here andra more wow okay roger that i'll i'll do my best Regarding the thank you for your service, but them not really meaning it or saying it with the best intentions, I do get that. I have actually seen people attack others because of their affiliation with the military. I'm pretty sure I got fired once for trying to make my employer donate to the Veterans Food Bank. Like, they will attack you for sure just for leaning even slightly that way, let alone for actually being in combat. I used to be annoyed at people, younger guys typically, who tell their co-workers that they see the military positively and are maybe thinking of joining. Like, I would try to make faces at them to get them to not tell that one guy that type of stuff. And the reason why is what you said, basically. There are people so prejudiced that they will start attacking you in every way possible if they know you're leaning that way. And they did. Like, I was right. They would just do it primarily behind their back at the time, and then later on, especially in the last few years, it really got so much worse. So in terms of my strategy of dealing with it, I typically just hide stuff. That thing with them fired me. Uh, uh, was that the last? Was that the last straw? The thing with them fired me was the last straw. Nothing else had happened in the meantime to cause any issues. They refused to tell me why, and the only real reason, the only thing that had changed from a week prior, was that I asked them to set up a jar or something and volunteered to deliver whatever aid we did get. I know, I know, I was stupid, but it was one of the stores that would traditionally be more military and first responders. Uh, I really did not think they were going to give me grief about it, and I was feeling particularly sympathetic to their cause at the time because I could barely afford food. So yeah, like a fool, I reacted. They got rid of me about a week for no cause. Week before Christmas, I should have been smarter about it. I knew they had a management team but I still thought naively that it would be that it would be a manager in favor of this kind of stuff and I opened my mouth prior to checking <clears throat> so in retribution I volunteered stuff for the net for the next like three to four years fuck them I have my own little movement now uh, learned my lesson though never tell people too much about what you have planned even if it is awesome and logically they should agree with you Logic is rarely what guides decision-making. I'm very sorry that this happened to you during such a personal tragedy, too. 
I am not familiar with that area, but it is very toxic to do that kind of stuff to anyone. I've hated this trend ever since it started with a passion. The problem I have is that I tend to get stuck in between these types of social crossfires. I'm not the jarhead they consider to be the enemy, but I do tend to try to talk to everyone, so when people like that try to start shit up, I tend to hear about it. For most people, if they have a real complaint, not an ideological one, you can typically get them to see the other side of the fence and calm down. But I would say be careful trying, because a lot of time you're just going to end up catching crap from both sides if they're really dug into their positions and dying to duke it out, and I just end up feeling like I'm the world's worst horror movie all the time. I'm going to stop there momentarily. Um, so... A lot of what I dealt with when I lived in the greater Raleigh area for a short period of time was twofold. I was dealing with the loss of my son, so I was grieving, and I, I was probably wearing that on my sleeves more than I imagined. It always seemed like everywhere I went, somebody was inquiring about my recent relocation. Because I, I basically relocated to the Raleigh area. It, it depends on your perspective. I moved the family in June of 14. I didn't join them in, uh, completely until December. Um, that's when I finally cashed in all my leave time and joined him 100%. But everybody was inquiring about my relocation, and at the time, I never thought of trying to answer it a different way. I just answered them honestly. Um, so I don't know if that was terribly off-putting. I can imagine it was. Um, as a veteran myself, I've seen a lot of toxic vets. I've seen a lot of vets that depending on what they're dealing with and everybody deals with things differently but some vets can and do come across as toxic um, I can tell you that having been put in that high stress high threat environment multiple times and having survived it with like a sense of like holy shit that just happened holy shit I'm still here holy shit I've still got all my fingers and toes and eyes and ears and and I don't know why um, it can have an effect on you. Um, I know the military increased its size. More and more people served as a result of 9-11. I can tell you that things were much different prior to 9-11 in every way, shape, or form. Um, less of us were serving. And the real big trend back in my day, when I was much, much younger, the real big trend was service members who were not like special forces or in the... The, the snake eaters club um, would always try to go home on leave and pretend to be one of the snake eaters. So like Army Ranger, Army Green Beret, Army Delta Force, Navy SEAL, Navy Swift Boat, Air Force PJ, Air Force Tactical Controller, uh, Marine Recon, Marine Sniper, Marine Force Recon, um, or even in my world, Marine Infantry, who's actually been to combat and whatnot. And what was so funny is we used to call them these barstool warriors, or even worse than that, we call them libo stacks. So you'd be at the bar, and there'd be this barstool warrior who was the Delta Force Recon Sniper Seal Ranger, um, or the Delta Force Recon Ranger, uh, Delta Force Recon Ranger Sniper Seal PJ. Yeah, Delta Force Recon Ranger Sniper Seal PJ. Right, the the barstool warrior. Been there, done that. You know, and then you get to talk, you let him talk for a little bit, and like none of his things match up. The last one I remember was sometime after 9 uh, 11, back in like maybe 01. Uh, some guy was trying to tell me he was out of San Mateo with uh, Golf 2 3. And I was like, well, you got the golf right, you got 2 3, all right, but 2 3 has never been stationed in Mateo, never. But I digress, at least not while he was alive. Um, and then we get the kids that do the Libo stacks, the kids that go home on leave and liberty. And all of a sudden, they've got a stack of ribbons that they don't rate. So, um, yeah, I, one of the things I did deal with was uh, what was perceived to be as discrimination against the military. But that's part of the reason we moved back here is I just, I just blend in. I'm just a normal, regular, everyday dude living here. You'd be shocked at the kind of stuff they pick on, though. It's jokes, like, it's usually jokes based on movies. The jarhead enemy man did not actually do anything wrong or tragic or awful. It would start with them having an issue that he joked in a way which they deemed inappropriate somehow and continue with the stupidest shit imaginable. The first time I saw this, 
stuff, it truly shocked me. I truly thought that the guy had done something major, like he lost his shit and started swearing at people, or he told a customer they're ugly and retarded. Something like that to justify the never-ending workplace shit they were giving him and why they would keep giving me shit for just talking to him like a normal person would. I talk to everyone tragically. It's just what I do. It's not special. It's just what I do. So <clears throat> when I eventually got my job at Home Depot <clears throat> after some of the shenanigans I went through with a previous employer, at least one or two co-workers were kind of soliciting information from me and I answered them relatively candidly. Now granted, like in this situation, they took it to a whole, do, whole new degree and I was belligerently fortunate that my store manager was married to an Army Green Beret. She was literally driving 90 minutes one way to be the store manager in Garner while living outside of Fayetteville. Her husband was actual Special Forces. So when these two employees tried to claim the victim card, claim the victim status, be the victim, she basically put them in their place. And I was very fortunate, and that's why I'll never say anything bad against the Home Depot. Just didn't like working weekends. Well, my kids were starting to get into stuff, and it was so funny. I tried to get a job that didn't a lot that didn't make me work weekends, and then no sooner than I get the job, then my kids stopped doing the stuff they were doing. Uh, over a year of random drama later, they finally told me what he did to be so on the outs with everyone. Drum roll. He took the steps up the staircase two to three at a time and jumped around and refused to apologize later and admit he was wrong. That was the official position of management. Over a year of grief giving and trying to convince everyone he's persona non grata, over a year of me trying to figure out what the fuck is going on, and that was the actual official reason. That that was why they kept trying to drive a wedge and giving me dirty looks and all this stuff. We were not allowed to, to take the steps more than one at a time because it was considered a safety risk. Over one fucking year of dirty looks. For the staircase? Are you shitting me? Seriously. Jumped around. I don't know about the jumped around part, but because it was, whatever. So I don't know if this is going to make you feel better or worse, but to me, it is tragic that this is the state of society. And after this point in time, I got so it got so much worse. It's not that I didn't, I don't get it, that it can get rough. I do get it. But if I let them convince me that they have the right to tell me who to talk to and when and how to think and all of this shit, they win. And I don't play to lose. I play to reach the sensible people and to wake people up and to win. The more extreme people are in the minority, typically most people are just sheep caught in the middle. So why should we let them have the sheep? They can keep my sheep instead. I'll treat them far better. And I like the guard dogs too. They have a purpose. Again, I'll treat them better. Why leave them to the nutcases? Makes no sense. They did the same thing with my dog too, by the way. Too much dog. Why do you need it? Why this? Why that? For too many busybodies sticking their noses where they don't belong, Never, I never once went to their home to criticize what they need or don't need. Politeness should be reciprocated. These people are bullies. I can tell this story because no one knows who I'm talking about. I never told him and I lost touch with them immediately afterwards. I quit. I went from pressure to not associate with certain people to straight up firing within like three to five years. I'm not saying he was perfect or anything. He could have tried a bit to be diplomatic at least. He did seem to delight in shocking people sometimes, but pretty much comedian and millions of other people do the same thing. The vitriol was not deserved. It was beyond anything reasonable. And this is not a conclusive list. I glossed over the details which could have been problematic. Their reasoning though, that is 100% complete. Nothing missing there. That was a full conversation between me and the rest of the team one day. Life advice, don't look for vitriol. Vitriol only leads to vitriol. No one wins. Stace, what I, or I'm sorry, Andrew, what I can tell you is this. Um, not all of us, but some of us have a particularly twisted and disturbing sense of humor. Um, you know, like we'll make jokes like, oh, it's not gay unless you make eye contact, or it's not gay if you're wearing boot bands, or, you know, stuff like that. You know, just stupid, like, frat boy type stuff. It's how, I guess you could say, we cope. And a lot of it, 
I can't speak for everybody. Not everybody's been there, done that. Not everybody's got the T-shirt that's got holes in it. Some people, you know, just because of the luck of the draw, did not experience as as much combat as others. It's not that they didn't want to. It's just that it didn't happen. My two deployments to Afghanistan were relatively benign when I compared them side by side to my three deployments to Iraq. Um, it, it just is what it is. Uh, what I have noticed in... I feel like we're going on a decade. I feel like ever since the midway through the second term of Obama, we've kind of... Well, maybe not even Obama. Maybe coming out of Obama, going into Trump. I can't remember. I feel like for the better part of a decade, though... Ever since like Black Lives Matter became a thing and whatnot, and then Antifa and whatnot, we've created this whole concept of celebrating the victim. We've created this whole mantra about victims are heroes, and people then want to be victims. People look for reasons to be victims. People desperately seek out reasons to be victims. And I hate to say it, but the larger veteran community as a whole usually tends to be built of much stronger stuff. I mean, you figure, I was on active duty from roughly 1994 to 2015. I'm a Gen Xer. I'm retired. I'd be hitting my 30-year mark this year if I was able to stay in. So, while we may have opened the door to a lot of this nonsense to come into the real world, we're also built of a better, of a harder stuff. And we have not yet learned how to embrace being victims. We've not yet learned how to harness uh, the benefits and the social currency of being a victim. And to me, that's what it sounds like, is you were dealing with a lot of people that created their own little echo chamber of who's a better victim, who's a greater victim, and they targeted this guy because those groups tend to target people. That's their whole thing. And they targeted this guy, and they effectively won, and only because over enough time, they probably found something legit. Something very similar happened to me. Um, and who knows? Like in my case... They inadvertently, accidentally struck gold without even trying. And they very well could have done the same thing with this guy. Uh, let me double check the Word document real quick. Okay. Um, and then... Let me see here real quick. Forgive me. Trying to do something here. All right, make sure I got everything. All right, looks like I got it. Therefore, the last thing you wrote was the Pentagon's hyper focus on hypersonic missile threat. Sandra Irwin, August 25th, 2021. I'm curious if anyone knows if there's been any progress on this issue. I cannot seem to find anything. It looks to me as if they are still not quite able to track hypersonics during those crucial stages due to the heat issue and the lack of predictable trajectory issues. Yay, more fun topics. Um, so my, I really haven't put a lot of effort into studying this other than, to me, hypersonic is a different way of saying supersonic. Supersonic meaning faster than the speed of sound. So I don't know if hypersonic is twice the speed of sound so Mach 1 is the speed of sound so if you exceed Mach 1 you're you're going faster than the speed of sound Mach 2 being twice the speed of sound so on and so forth so I'd actually have to research what makes something hypersonic over that of supersonic so yeah and last but not least let me make sure I get the name right gotta do a quick little Google search Harrison Butker, is that it? Okay, Harrison Butker, roger that. Okay, Harrison Butker. So I went and watched the video. I just, I, I can't, couldn't, I couldn't commit the name to memory. Um, here's what I will say. Um, he's a Catholic and a very proud traditional Catholic man. And he was speaking at a very isolated Catholic university, um, St. Benedictine or something, where he was speaking to a very specific crowd of people and addressing very specific topics that is uniquely specific to those people. And we live in a society nowadays where because you can record these things and you can put them on the internet and you can get such greater reach, right? 
that people hear what they want to hear as long as it produces results in their own mindset of, I'm a victim. I've just been victimized. I am now deserving of victim points and victim currency. He was stating his opinion as a Catholic to a group of Catholics in a very specific venue to a very specific group of people. Stace, you mentioned the, the concept of free speech, and I'm with you 100%. Um, I detest the concept that he's not allowed to be religious. I may not be a fan of religion. I may not be a fan of organized religion and some of the things that are the outcomes of those religions. But people who use it to find their purpose in life, people who use it as their moral and ethical compass to walk a straight path, I don't have problems with. I do have, peop I do have problems with people who solicit leave me the F alone. If I want God, if I want Jesus, Jehovah, whatever, I will come looking for it. Leave me alone. I get it. All right. I, I understand. There's topics that are very near and dear to my heart that I would love to talk about, um, but it got to the point where I had to start using this channel as a form of catharsis so that I didn't bother people in my everyday life with topics I was passionate about. Um, also, those of us in the military, we swear an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America and obey the orders of the President and all officers appoint, you know, appointed over us. The initiation of that oath is to preserve and protect the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies foreign and domestic. The First Amendment of the Constitution is the freedom of speech. So while I may not agree with everybody else taking advantage of their First Amendment right to speak out against Harris and Butker, that's kind of the whole purpose. Um, but like I said, we live in a day and age where, oh, I'm a victim, come celebrate me, I'm a victim. Let me tell you more about being a victim. Look, you know, if you're a woman that doesn't want to have kids, don't have kids. Just don't complain about it later in life, or at least be willing to say that you made a mistake. All right? If you disagree with his position, that's fine. Whatever. Um, I don't think he should be silenced or canceled. And I would very much, I would be very disappointed if the NFL struck out against him in a negative way, because I think it sends a very, very clear and bad message. Just like I did not support the NFL when they were supporting these false narratives, like Colin Kaepernick's narrative or the Michael Brown narrative. All right, or if the NFL even supported the, the George Floyd narrative. Um, I'm not a big fan of these narratives, especially when these narratives do nothing more than throw gasoline on a fire that we've been trying to put out for years. I don't know why, but people seem to find currency in reigniting the embers of racism into flames, as though we're back in the 1950s. I don't, I don't know why, but that seems to be a thing. So I really hope the NFL doesn't take action against him and just leaves him the fuck alone and let the court of public opinion, you know, say their piece and everybody moves the fuck on. Um, otherwise, I'd have to probably wait for questions to roll in because I'm not a big fan of religion. Um, I don't have, I don't hate people who have it. It's just not for me. It's not my thing. So I'm like, you do you. And hopefully that answers that. Um, and I'm sorry if it took so long. With that being said, if you're not familiar with my channel, I don't give a shit about the likes, the notifications, the subscriptions. I don't care about the algorithm. I'm not in it for monetization. Um, I very selfishly use this for a, a form of therapy. Um, I also selfishly use this to try to reach out and maybe stimulate some conversation, especially amongst people that maybe we don't agree with so that we don't find ourselves isolated in these echo chambers drawing lines in the sand, declaring each other to be enemies of each other, when we should really be trying to find ways to connect. And it's not lost on me, the um, oxymoronicness of it, where I'm trying to connect with people through the internet, which basically allows us to disconnect from actual people. But if you leave a comment, I promise I will do my best to read, react, and respond. I'm not used to my channel being this popular, so if it takes me a while, I apologize in advance. I've been trying to get to a point where I record these videos on Sunday, and then depending on how the internet's doing, I may not get it uploaded until Monday. So if you leave a comment, 
i greatly appreciate. thanks for watching till then you're awesome. be safe out there.